Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Evolutionary Church, where our mission is a planetary awakening in love through a unique self symphony. And together, we declare that the last day of the old face of evolution is honored as the first day of the new face of creation. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Lisa Witter. I'm the Executive Vice President of the Center for Integral Wisdom. I am also your moderator and the executive producer of this gorgeous gathering we do every single Saturday morning called Evolutionary Church. And in Evolutionary Church, we are connected, we are whole, we are expressions of the entire process of creation and we are activating a new humanity. We are awakening, as we say, as a new species, homo amor universalis. And we are not only a church, we are a synagogue, we're a mosque, we're a temple, we're a zendo, we are all of it. No one is excluded, everyone is included, and we come together to attune to the evolutionary impulse that is awakening within us. So welcome home, everyone. We're so delighted to be with you here this gorgeous morning before a couple days before Christmas Day, which many of us uh, celebrate Christmas. Some of us don't celebrate Christmas, but we're celebrating the holiday seasons um, today. Um, if you haven't already opened up your chat box to say hi and let us know where you're joining us from, please do that now. We use that chat box quite a bit during our uh, service, so please do open that up, say hi, and we'll be using that throughout our time together over the next hour or so. And if you are new, please let us know that you're new so we can give you a huge evolutionary, <laughs> virtual evolutionary hug from across the world. So we also want to say that today, if you didn't know, is a very, 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 very special day. It's the day that 89 years ago, God said, you know what? I can't do it without Barbara Marks Hubbard. I can't do it without a voice for conscious evolution and Barbara Marks Hubbard was born. So we are also celebrating Barbara's birthday today and we're so delighted to be on this journey with you, Barbara. Happiest of happy, happy birthdays <laughs> to you. And please do, uh, as a, a reminder, please do invite your friends, uh, your family, anyone else who you think might be interested in evolutionary church, we are open to everyone joining us, and we can't do it without you, without you spreading the word, without you spreading the message of what we're doing here in evolutionary church. We provide the link to share with your friend in every email that we send out, so just check any email from us. And you can forward that email to anyone who you think might be interested in joining us at Evolutionary Church. We sure do appreciate it, especially as we're moving into 2019 and we are growing this church immensely. Um, and as always, we will have a replay available for you uh, for Evolutionary Church within about 24 to 48 hours. So do check your inbox for that as well. For those of you who might be new, I want to give you just a brief overview of what to expect for the next hour. We always begin with a Dharma recap, where we recap uh, the code from last week to bring us into our message for this week. And then we move into a resonance with Barbara. She sets the resonant field for us. After Barbara sets that resonant field for us, we move into prayer with Mark. And after our gorgeous prayers are submitted, uh, then we move into our two sermons for the day. And after our sermons, we sort of tie it all up in a bow, hopefully, um, around the top of the hour. Sometimes we go just a couple minutes over, but you can expect that to happen within the next 60 minutes with us. And we are so delighted to be here with you. So with that, I will move us into our 
Dharma recap for today. And we've been working with a code that is um, specifically about power, right? And we say that power is holy and that the outrageous lover is power hungry. So I invite you to notice for a moment how those two statements might make you feel. Power is holy and the outrageous lover is power hungry. For a lot of people, just those two statements and hearing those words might make you feel a little bit squeamish, but that's primarily because we've been told that power is bad. Power has become associated with abuse. And unfortunately, since society has deconstructed all forms of power, so we've been left with no story of power that's equal to our potential. And what we've seen is that the most dangerous people in our world today are actually those people who have disowned their power drive and their power gets split off. As Mark was saying last week, their power gets split off and becomes a shadow form of power that's often disguised as a noble cause. So how do we actually know that power is holy? And we've, Barbara and Mark have said this before in the past, and I just want to bring it into the recap today. We know that power is holy because God is the infinity of power equally as much as God is the infinity of intimacy. And that power, the power of the Big Bang, lives uniquely within each one of us. So as our code, part of our code from last week says, the love of power is inseparable from the power of love. So we invite you to consider this, that when we say, I love you, we're also saying, I need you. I need you means that you have power over me. And at the same time, I'm powerful enough as an autonomous human being that I can surrender my power to you. It's a pretty profound thought and idea. Mark was saying last week that one of the deepest teachings of the erotic mystics of all the, the great sage, sages and Kashmir Shaivism and Kabbalah and Sufism, one of the, the greatest teachings is that when infinite reality went to create and manifest the world, it said, I love you so much that I'm prepared to need you. Infinite power said, I'm going to contract my power and give you power over me. I love you so much that I trust you. So I'm going to surrender my power, surrender, sorry, my power to you. I can't do it without you. So gorgeous, such a gorgeous teaching. It's deep. Now the truth is that we all have power over each other. It's the structure of reality and it's time for us to recognize that truth and it's time for us to reclaim our power. Power over isn't a bad thing when it's sourced by the power of transformation, which was another power that we talked about last week. So if we break this idea down for just a moment, the power of transformation is activated or energized by our, our allurement to a memory of the future, our memory of the future. So you want to remember that the past and the future live in the infinite eternity of the present. This is, this is actually from another uh, previous uh, church that we did. We said that the past and the future live in the infinite eternity of the present. So therefore, the eternal now is a transformative 
crucible in which our evolutionary unique self calls us to be the possibility of possibility right now. So when we're allured to that, when we're allured to the memory of the future, we become filled with power, authentic power, not pseudo power. We no longer need the, super, the superficial version of power over because our power is for, our power is for our highest self. And the moment that we're filled with authentic power, we stop playing power games. So the most genuine power of transformation is when we offer our transformation to the transformation of the whole. So these are the, the three holy faces of the one power, the power of transformation, the power over and power for. And evolutionary church is the vehicle that carries our collective divine power. So with that, I invite us to enter into the sacred the holy space of evolutionary church is Barbara sets the resonant field for us. Barbara, I hand it over to you. Thank you, Lisa. Today, as we approach Christmas, and I will read the code in just a moment to create more than just resonance, actually, it has to become epiphany. And here's what I want to just remind us all about power as we go into this. We speak here of the power of love to evolve the world. And we're living in a moment <clears throat> where the misuse of power for the very first time ever can destroy the entire species quickly by the misuse of power because we never had power of the degree of destructiveness that we now have it, as I will say in my sermon, nor therefore can we just depend on a mild form of loving power that this church is activating evolutionary power for the first time at this scale. And I will read this code now. Let's think not only of how we are going to evolve power to, to represent this elixir of love, but we're going to deal with the power that could destroy our entire species in about 10 minutes. <clears throat> Our narrative of power is directly emergent from our narrative of identity, which is directly emergent from our universe story. Power is a divine elixir, nectar, and not poison. There are three forms of power. The first two forms of power are power over and power for. Contrary to the popular understanding which deifies power for and demonizes power over, both forms of power are holy. The third form of power is the power of. All three forms of power are inextricable from each other. Three faces of the one. Love and power are not opposites. The love of power is inseparable from the power of love. inseparable from the power of love. The outrageous lover is power hungry. The highest pleasure is the pleasure of power. The highest 
power is to act and surrender in the same moment in action in action action in in action to deny your full power is to deny god to deny your full power is to stand against the good the true and the beautiful thank you and i turn my word to beloved mark beloved barbara oh my god lisa thank you for that gorgeous recapitulation of the the, the precise and gorgeous dharma that we all did together last week mm -hmm. thank you so much lisa, for for just the vishnu gorgeous holding of the space for the dharma recap and for just all of that gorgeousness and barbara oh my god everybody big drum roll we are now in evolutionary church we're in the church of evolutionary love that we founded together love and we are on the most awesome powerful wild ecstatic wondrous day it's barbara's birthday oh my god it's barbara's birthday and your birthday is the day god said i cannot do it without your power <laughs> that is the birthday of, right the birthday is literally the whole dharma is in barbara's birthday everyone Oh my God. So let's go into the chat box and first let's say, oh my God, wild, ecstatic, happy birthday, but we're gonna do it a couple of times and in different ways, okay? But let's really get, what does Barbara's birthday mean? Okay, beloved B, and, and, and she's gonna talk about this in her sermon in some particular way, as Barbara's in Vashon now at her daughter Suzanne's and had some good oatmeal this morning, which is fantastic <laughs> on your birthday. But now we wanna offer you just this, this gorgeous reflection love. Right, I mean, it's so unbelievable. And you and I talk about this every day, but it's so wonderful to feel it. Your birthday, I mean, it's unbelievable. Right? Literally, God is the infinity of power. And the infinity of power, at a particular moment in time, intended Barbara Marks Hubbardness. And turned to Barbara Marks Hubbard and said, right, oh my God, meet me in the tomb of Metamorphosis. <laughs> Right? And I cannot do it without you, even though I'm the infinity of power. So if I'm the infinity of power, how could it possibly be that I can't do it without you? <laughs> that is a direct contradiction. Those two things, literally the sentence makes no sense. I'm God, the infinity of power. Right? And I turn to Barbara and I say, I can't do it without you. It makes no sense. I'm, I'm the most powerful person ever. But actually, the, the essence of I love you, right? So we talked about last week and Lisa talked about in the recapitulation, right? Right, right. It's so beautiful. I love you means God says, I love you, Barbara. And Barbara, I need you. And Barbara, I can't do it without you. And because the second goddess says, I can't do it without you, what goddess is saying is, I'm limiting my power, or to say differently, I'm sharing my power with you. Or to say it differently, I, God, the infinity of power, am empowering you, right? Because, you know, we talk so much about empowerment. I mean, empowerment means we forget, right, right, that kind of politically correct world has this little contradiction. It, it labels power as abusive, but then it sneaks in power on the other side and talks about empowerment. You notice that? There's this kind of double move. But actually, if I empower you, then you have power. And I can only empower you if my power, I'm giving you something of my power and so for example to join genius to join genius we have to right right barbara and mark we have to we have to empower each other to empower each other we have to say barbara i give you power over me the way you play the way you teach the way you act has power over me it impacts me right i impact you we impact each other and we were so powerful that we can surrender god is so powerful that god can surrender some of god's power to barbara Right? and trust that Barbara's going to live, right, the gorgeous, evolutionary, unique self, homo amor, as Barbara in person, right, homo amor, as Barbara Marks Hubbard, the cosmoerotic universe in person, and that, oh my God, right, that power is going to be powerful. It's going to be power over, and it's going to be power for, because in the deepest place, here's the story, okay, in the deepest place, power over and power for merge together. Right, Terry pointed out last week when he wrote an email after church that in church like six, eight months ago, 
we talked about the distinction between power over and power for. We talked about power for, for the service of, in service of, for the sake of. We talked about that being the primary sacred form of power. Then we evolved the Dharma, we deepened it. And we realized that power over is not just a shadow form, but power over is a divine elixir, it's a delight, right? I have power over you as a function of love. My power over you means I impact you. When, when your heart's awake, when Barbara's excited, and I get a, an email or we talk in the morning, right? And I'm excited, so we excite each other. We, we get excited together. We, we experience vocational evolutionary arousal, right? And we impact each other, right? That's what love means. And when I love someone, I say, you have power over me. And it means you can hurt me. And it means you can blow my heart open. And just by the glance of your delight, I can feel the self-evident goodness of my being alive in the world. We have power over each other. And we're going to talk about today, particularly, and in honor, beloved B of your birthday, beloved Barbara, right? right? We're going to talk about something that Barbara and I talk about all the time, right? In a zillion communications, which is also the power of transformation. We began talking about it last week. But what's a birthday? A birthday is the beginning of the story, and my whole life is a series of transformations. And transformation does not stop literally to my last breath, right? So there's no such thing as old or young. There's actually just deeper and deeper transformations. And when you're transforming ever more deeply, and you actually realize that reality is birthing a new reality in every moment, that moments don't repeat. Just like there's a unique self of a person, there's a unique self of time. Every moment is new. So when my unique self, intended by divinity, empowered by divinity, made wildly, ecstatically central and important by divinity, because we have in physics multiple centers. So Barbara Mark Hubbard is, on her birthday, the center of the universe, right? Empowered by the infinity of power. And she doesn't get older, she gets newer, right? Every day. Because she engages, Barbara engages in ever deeper transformation. And then when we come together, and we together celebrate that birth, and then we together birth homo amor, wow. We birth a church of evolutionary love, right? Wow. When we realize that each of our birthdays is in devotion to birthing the next evolution of the source code that's actually going to take us from dystopia, meaning billions of people suffering and possibly dying soon. The next several decades would be a long shot. But we're actually sitting here on the source code, the new store of reality that can actually birth heaven on earth. Right? We realize that God turns to the church of evolutionary love. Barbara said this morning when we were talking before, our church, right? My birthday, right? And the, the birthday of the Church of Evolutionary Love. Let's make it all one birthday. So yes, it's all one birthday. I, Barbara, first, we're just delighted. We're, we're not loving you. We're madly loving you, right? Hafiz says, right? Love is for the, for the courtly people. Mad love is for us. We're madly loving you. We're delighting in you. We're honoring you. And together, right? My whole mate, beloved evolutionary partner, I am so honored, so delighted right, to celebrate this birth with you and to birth together with all of us, right, as homo amor, right, literally the next stage of human evolution. And when we say that, we're not being grandiose. We're not exaggerating. We're not hyperbolizing. It actually is true. And to actually get that will blow your heart so wide open that you'll have a Christmas and a New Year that's unimaginable. Because actually, it's the birth of the Christ Homo more is the birth of the new Christ. It is the newness that's happening. So let's take, let's take all of that into prayer, friends. Let's take and let's bring before the infinity of power, who's also the infinity of intimacy. Let's bring before literally, right? And if Barbara lets us, we're going to sneak in with her. We're going to celebrate Barbara's birthday and all of our birthdays and the birthday of Homo Amor, right? The birthday of the new Christ. We're going to celebrate it now together. And the way we got to do it is we don't bypass our personal stories. You can't go big until you go into the infinite dignity of your story. Prayer affirms the dignity of personal need. And when we come before God in prayer and we ask for literally everything, for Aunt Sadie and for Uncle Mo, for what I need, right, to manifest, 
right? For maybe my new knee operation, right? For my, my niece, right? Who's trying to get into college for enough prosperity to be able to actually be effective and do what I need to do in the world, right? For my health, right? For the health of my neighbor, right? And for, for, for everything that the world needs, but I ask for everything. You don't leave everything out or anything out, right? I literally, I come before the divine who loves me madly and I share my holy and my broken hallelujah. And I turn to the infinity of intimacy and say, oh my God, I love you. I love you. I need you. And the infinity, infinity of intimacy turns to you and says, I love you. I need you. You have power over me. I'm going to give you everything I can. Open your hands and receive it. Let's bring our holy and broken hallelujah right into the holy of holies and let's blow it open. Oh my, oh my God. Friends, let's meet in the chat box and let's pray like we've never prayed before. Let's pray like we've never prayed. Let's pray in a way that we ask for everything. We know our own outrageous beauty, and we know that, that God got us the infinity of intimacy said, I can't do it without you. And so therefore, I need everything in order to be fully, radically empowered as an agent of right, the evolutionary awakening, as an agent of homo amor, as homo amor, as conscious evolution. So let's pray. What do we need, friends? Right? And oots, you start, and let's, friends, Let's have, in honor of Christmas, everybody in the chat box, don't skip it, right? When you actually say it and write it, something happens and opens in you and opens in the world, and you actually enter into the mind and heart of God, right? And things begin to create and manifest. It's real. It's real. Ooh, show us how to pray, right? I pray for good mental, psychological, and spiritual fitness to birth my next best transformation possible for the good of all, right? Andre, Andre, he writes, I, we're waiting for that prayer, Andre, throw it down, right? Shahati, right? I pray, beloved goddess, for finding a house in Amsterdam where I can create a home for many homo amores. Suzette, right? Suzette, goddess from Santa Cruz, I pray that I get this dream job. I continue focusing on my transformation as it transforms everything. Rhoda, it's so good to see you. I love you, God. You need me. Please guide me. Yes. Inika, most awesome Inika. Most awesome Inika in Holland. I pray for light over depression. Right? When I feel the sadness, right? I pray that I can actually step into that sadness, sit in the hole. Don't try and cover over the hole and let it light up with the joy that's Inika. And I know Inika. Inika is, she is, she's gorgeous. Right? She's gorgeous quality of human being. So Inika, we're loving you madly. Thank you. Lisa, I pray for Lainey's health and happiness that she realizes and steps into her power. Right? Nahid, I pray for the power of the presence of love that I am. Nahid, because I know you and I've met you, I pray that you actually claim your power for the direct potent effect that the world's waiting for directly from you. Oh my God, unbelievable. Sally Adams, yes. I pray for the erotic total merger with goddess as I work, live, and dance. Hallelujah. Thomas Goddard. Yes, Tom, my beloved brother, I pray for the health of my business in 2019. And I pray that your business doubles and triples in a way that, of course, you can hold it and it works well. And that the goodness of you and the brilliance of you in business right, is just recognized and manifest and explodes. Kirsten Zohar, I pray to find my place in the community I'm with right now. Yes, and to find the best integration between the center and this built, beautiful community so that out of this integration comes holiness and love and imagine, right, unimaginable things happen and come wildly, gorgeously, right, into the world, right? Oh my God, just feel the prayers, right? Andre, I pray for the open heart of all that's written within the power of, of love. Lirazi, Lirazi, oh my God, right? Pray for entering a deeper layer of myself which I can open wider and bigger than ever before. Oh my God, yes, I pray with you for Lainey, right, to Shahati, right? Jen, I'm a messenger of peace and love, and I choose to transform the hearts and minds with my work, which is gorgeous, Jen, and if you can, if you're open to it, right, ask it in prayer, right? We're actually reclaiming, right, turning to the infinity of intimacy and saying, I'm your partner, right? I love you madly, help me, right? Give me everything. Right, Christina to hell, yes, I pray to recover from this dive into illness, ouch, right? And your hurt is our hurt and my hurt, right? Loving you madly, Christina to hell, all of us, right? Right, Mosa, yay, Mosa, who's not at work today, I think not, right? Yay, 
right? I pray that my love is a beacon to a light, more love everywhere and unique voice, right, awaits you. Oh my God, Andres, yes, Andres from Argentina. I pray for a blessed Christmas for everyone. Amen, right? Tom, it's so good to see you, Tom. Let us use our power over and for, right, to co-create and transformational oneness as evolutionary beings. And Tom, love you madly and just the most gentle, humble invitation. And give us your prayer also. What are you praying for? What are you asking the infinity of intimacy to partner for with you, right? So the, the, the world of new thought talked about, right, I affirm, right? Because they didn't want to do prayer in the old way because they thought that God was a grandfather in the sky who was, you know, ethnocentric and homophobic and let's just affirm what already is. But actually, God is roomy, holds us. God's in us. I affirm what's true. And I turn to God and I say, hold me, know me right? And I pray and I turn and I ask for. So we both affirm, right? We declare and we pray, God, please, 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 please love you madly. Be with me, right? And that opens gates that nothing else opens, right? Jillian, I pray for my continued growth and healing to step into even more power and goodness of who I am. Robert, yes, Jillian, I desire the infinity of power. Enter me as my own authentic, unique self, unfolding good orderly direction and outrageous love of myself. Christina Tell, I pray for my mom to come through her dark night of the soul, right? And I'm going to also invite people, right, who haven't prayed, right, right, right? Gare, I pray for health, wealth, and power. That's, that's a straight man. That's a man I trust. You get that? Health, wealth, and power, right? Don't disown. Don't split off my prayer. I pray for family, happy, and an attachment village. Roxanne, I pray for those who don't feel the love to feel the love. Liam, right, so good to see you. I pray for strength and understanding to let that outrageous love within me flow out. Heal me in the process, right? Bill Hayden, right? right. I pray for the power to reunite brother and sister, mother and son in love so we can evolve as a family, right? Blows your heart open. Thank you, Bill. Jeremy, I pray that I can begin to comprehend the possibilities of being hungry for power. See, oh my God, see, it's so awesome to see you. I pray for the next best place for Noah, Kitty, and I to move to. An outrageous abundance of love and abundance to present itself here. Does everyone get it? And I want to just invite, right, just one or two more people before I turn the word to the birthday woman, the birthday girl, right? Oh, my God, to beloved Barbara, to my homemate, right? I want to just ask a couple of more people to step out if you can. Invitation, gentle, humble. Step out of the watching spectator mode and step in. Something happens when you step in. Right? We know the neuroscience. When you actually write something, right, you actually bring something into reality. And in mysticism, when you write a prayer, or if you don't want to write, speak it out loud wherever you are in the world. Just speak it out loud. Don't just think it. Speak it out loud. Terry, Terry, I'm praying, right, my Christed consciousness and going out into the world as the master of love, right, that I am. Right, everybody got that? Right, just, oh my God. So yes, yes, happy birthday, beloved. And I am so delighted to turn the word to you. Wow. Have a good day, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody. And I want to recognize birth here. Since we're approaching Christmas, the birth of the Christ child, it happens to be my birthday. So I always associate my birth with Christmas, which I love. And I want to tell you something awesome about power. For us to see how to apply our power to this particular situation. I'm just reading a book by my own brother-in-law, Daniel Ellsberg. It's called The Doomsday Machine, Confessions of a <coughs> Nuclear War Planner. <clears throat> Dan worked for Rand Corporation. He released the Pentagon Papers. He was due for 123 years in prison. And he was saved by the fact that Nixon misused his power and sent his aides to get Daniel's private material, psychiatric material, and Nixon's aides were put in prison and Nixon resigned. Something happened there around Daniel, and I want to just bring it up in relationship to our narrative of power. And here, here is what it is in reading this book, which I highly recommend, The Doomsday Machine. It's the awesome story as humanity gains the power of gods through the nuclear power, wherein it is now declared quite clearly that our defense strategy 
if it should ever be actually used, first strike and response strike leads to the annihilation of our species. Power. <laughs> Humans never had anything like that power. And as Daniel is just describing it, most of the people working for this are good people. And they thought for a while they were helping to defeat the Russians, and then they saw if they did that and the Russians were helping to defeat us, that we would annihilate each other. And I won't go into the details of this except to say that I then am reading this, began to think of our narrative here and our code about how great our power needs to be. And I'm going to make one more point before I go to that, which is Saturday. And, and Mark is complaining about Saturday being the day of our church because he'd like it to be Sunday. So we won't be on Sabbath. But you know what? If we take Saturday, certainly in the tomb of metamorphosis, which they said they placed Jesus in, it's very interesting to note that the most interesting day of the three days in the tomb was Saturday. Because day number one, I've been crucified, I'm destroyed, I'm dead. Day number three, I'm arising as a new human, homo amor in person. What did I do on Saturday to become homo amor? What did Jesus do on Saturday to appear to Mary as the resurrected Christ, a new human, capable of doing what he did? So if it's just interesting that the power we now have through our understanding of how nature works, particularly in the nuclear realm, leads to the misuse of power which could annihilate the entire species. So let's make the awesome statement that since it is Saturday in the tomb of metamorphosis, wherein the misuse of power could possibly destroy our species quickly. It is also true in Saturday, in the tomb of metamorphosis, we are evolving our species into a new human. And the Church of Saturday and the Church of Evolutionary Love is dedicated to homo amor. So I want to put on the doomsday machine another book called Homo Amor. Seriously. <laughs> that would recognize the awesome power that the human species has gained through our brilliant understanding of how nature works. So the, the same species that could do that quickly. Is it true that the same species could have the power to become Homo, homo Amor? And if we look at our narrative here, our narrative of power is directly emergent from our narrative of identity. So let's say our identity here is Homo Amor, which is directly emergent from our universe story. And the universe story from the origin of creation to the present as you have said so beautifully, Mark, is a love story. And how is it a love story? Particle to particle, attracted to particle from quarks to us. Okay, so if we're going to become homo amor, in our narrative of power, power is a divine elixir, nectar and not poison. This is to say we have to dare be as powerful as the power that could destroy us times 10. See, we have to be more powerful. And here's a power that is so great, and we have it, and our, our president of the United States is getting more of it, and it now it used to be just the U.S. and USSR, and now it's nine, nine different countries, including our own in, in the United States. And so I'm, I'm just using our metaphor, um, code here, uh, the, there are three forms of power. The first two forms are power 
of power, our power over, now that we know we have power over to destroy ourselves, we also have power over to create a world in which everyone, everyone alive can choose to be more of who they are, could actually become a new human, or let's call it homo amor. That would be power over ourselves, the inner being that we are, the inner impulse of evolution that's in us, power over that is to give birth to who we are, or allow it to be misused at this scale. So the three forms of power, the first two are power over and power for. And what I'm saying, Mark, is that we have to have power over this impulse inside ourselves so that it could be as great as the power that we can misuse. This is really fascinating to me, that the only way, because as Dan is writing this, most people are, are, are relatively nice and kind who are doing this. And, and when Dan suddenly notices in the margin of this book, oh, 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 this is the annihilation of our species is our plan. And you know what? He hardly dared say this. Because if he did, he would be cast out from the lineage of power in which you get to know all this stuff. I mean, this is a very important book for us to all read in this church. Okay. okay. So, power over and power for. Contrary to the popular understanding which deifies power for and demonizes power over, both forms of power are holy. Okay, folks. Let's have power over the misuse of power, which is awesome, equals mc squared. It means it's how to blow up the universe. We have to have power over that now for love. This means because the power is the greatest it's ever been, the power over it has to be the greatest it's ever been and even greater. And this is what I would like to dedicate myself and my church on my birthday to power yes. over. That which, you know, if you really want to look at it, what would make it possible for people to be planning this? Okay, what happened to power? Contrary to the power, popular understanding, which deifies power for and demonizes power over, both forms of power are holy. The third form of power is the power of. The power of. Life, love, expression, transformation. We've each been given the power of gods. What would used to be called the ancient gods, and let's add for a moment high technology. That's the reason I've called this Homo Amore Universalis, and Mark has convinced me to leave off the Universalis, and I said only if we can include the high-tech genius into homo amor. Because otherwise, it, it's not enough. Just to love, you have to have the power mark. And the power in high-tech, if used by homo amor for love, actually will change the entire world. Okay. All right. Power of all three forms of power in, are inextricably from, inextric, inextricably from each other. <clears throat> three faces of the one love and power are not opposites the love of power is inseparable from the power of love you know what's so interesting to me having read this book of the misuse of power this makes this code ten times more meaningful to me but it also makes me see how strong love would need to be to actually change a situation which is on, on the threshold of self-destruction of the entire species. And we're planning for it. We're spending lots of money on it. Okay. Power. The love of power is inseparable from the power of love. Okay, folks, this is how great we have to be. The outrageous lover is power hungry. I'll tell you I'm power hungry with this defense department. 
I'm power hungry in pl making a plan great enough to use the power rather than to misuse it. I'm how powerful do we need to be to do that, folks? We're not going to do this just by being nice. We're all nice, but that's not it. Um, the outrageous lover is power hungry. Okay, I'm power hungry, and I'm inviting everybody to be power hungry. The highest pleasure is the pleasure of power. You know, I said to Sunrise Ranch last night, the other night, I said, okay, what's Sunrise Ranch going to do about this? <laughs> well, nobody ever thought they had to do anything about it. We're all going along how nice we are, how good we are. I said, no, I'm going to have a meeting at Sunrise Ranch, and I'm going to ask everybody what we can do. Because if we don't feel we're powerful enough to change the course of history that in our own government and nine others is going to hell, because there's going to be a mistake. There almost was in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Almost blew us up. And Khrushchev was able to stop it. He saw it. And he was able to convince the Presidium in, in, in Russia it doesn't matter because they wanted to look what? Powerful. And when Khrushchev pulled it out, out of the Cuban Missile Crisis, it looked, he said the fear was that Russia would lose its prestige. So the use of power here is not just simply power over, but the power of being greater than. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> the highest form of, the highest pleasure is, is the pleasure of power. The highest Power is to act and surrender in the same moment. Okay, well, let's act to take this power and then surrender. Wow. Inaction, inaction, action, in inaction. To deny your full power is to deny God. This is true. Because if we humans allow our defense department, our military, to own the power of science and technology and threaten to, to destroy the world, just threat, that's all it is. We, we're not using our power right. And this is real power that's needed. To deny your full power is to stand against the good, the true, and the beautiful. Okay, Mark, I turn this over to you. Amen. Rest the power that you are. What do you think beloved. of that code, huh? Wow, the code is now better than I even knew because you have to read the Doomsday Machine. Absolutely, no. Actually, yes. absolutely, and right. And when we wrote the code, right, of course, the Doomsday Machine, right. But in other words, the the misuse of power, the disowning of power, right, was unbelievably important. Just for one second, I'm going to help Barbara out with her birthday, right, and I'm just going to say, everybody, contribution. So what Barbara, contribution? <laughs> I'm going to grab it. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm going to grab it, birthday girl, just power of contribution. So let's just talk about power and what power means. Let's be oh, so oh. first. The, con the contribution yes. is there, right, in the, in the chat box. And in order for the church to actually become the most powerful church of evolutionary love that it needs to be, in order to actually write together and an act homo amor as the response to the doomsday machine, we can only do it, wow. and it takes, stay, stay with me for a second, love, it actually takes power. You see, it's very easy to listen, <clears throat> right? We wrote the code, right? Barbara just now read the code, right, in integration in response to the doomsday machine, and we're, so, we're, so we're, we're feeling it. But actually, you've gotta actually access personal power. The ability to actually get out my credit card, right, and actually make a contribution to actually impact and have power, that's where people get stopped. And that's what happens in the new age, right? In other words, in a certain sense, the Republican world, which is a gorgeous world in many holy ways, and it's got a lot of shadow forms today, it's very good at organizing, right? Right, right, right. The, the more liberal world has a much harder time organizing, right? It just, it can't do it, it can't quite do it, it can't quite hold it. So even the simple, right, possibility, of actually stepping in, this is our church. We wanna build this church to have 100 of these around the world, 100 churches of evolutionary love around the world. That's what we need. And we need to do that. We need to create out of the church of evolutionary love 
a planetary event, a planetary awakening and love through unique self symphony. And more than that, and let's go in with me, and we just have a little bit, little bit of time to actually take this the next step deeper, right? In honor, beloved, of your holy birthday, right? So let's birth this next step. Let's just see where we, let's take this code home. Where are we today, friends? The greatest power we have in the world today is the power of transformation. And the highest pleasure is the pleasure of power, right? And the highest pleasure of power is the power of transformation. And the highest transformation is actually to tell is actually to tell a new story, right? The highest transformation is to tell a new story because the most important thing we need today in the world is a story, right? To participate in evolving the source code of culture and consciousness. It's not enough, as Barbara says, to be nice. Not enough. <laughs> I've got to be infinitely more powerful than the abuses of power. And the way to be infinitely more powerful than the abuses of power is to actually access the source code of reality and actually rewrite the code right, of our culture. We rewrite the code of our culture through telling a new story and the codes that we're doing, the evolutionary love codes in church that we're doing is the single most powerful act. I am a thousand percent certain, Barbara and I are together, that a human being can do at this moment in time because, now stay with it, just so you get it for a second, so we move out of pre-modernity. We get to the Renaissance. Pre-modernity had codes of culture owned by different cultures. Every religion said, our system is the code of culture. And when reality triumphs, everyone's going to come around and be Christian. Everyone's going to come around and be Islamic. Everyone's going to come around and be Jewish. When you have true realization, you'll be Buddhist, right? Everyone was waiting for their code of culture to triumph. Okay? We then got to modernity and we said, well, we can't just be obedient, right, to God who we think commanded us to make our code of culture triumph for all the goods that all the good codes had. We need to actually, human being, a center stage. And so modernity unpacked a whole bunch of new stories. And those new stories all had science at the core, which was beautiful, but they had many different expressions. So one story was modern imperialism, right? British Empire, French Empire, we're going to conquer in the name right, of our vision. That didn't work. Right? But by the end of World War I, we had realized that imperialism was actually oppressive and brutal. And the British Empire was wildly destructive and people deserved to self-govern. So imperialism didn't work. We tried fascism, right? Mussolini, Hitler were fascism. Strongmen, stories of modernity didn't work. Then we had two stories left, right? So at the dawn of World War I, we had imperialism and fascism. At the end of World War I, imperialism and fascism in World War II had died. We were left with two stories, two global visions. One was communism. The other was liberal democracy. This huge clash between them. Communism exploded. It fell apart. The supermarket turned out to be more powerful than the gulag. So, so that disappeared, right? The communist story disappeared. Okay? We were left with one story, liberal democracy. And then liberal democracy actually isn't holding. The old vision of liberal democracy, that story is not holding. A million people commit suicide a year, right? Not working, right? Brexit, Trump, right? Liberal democracy is actually saying, we don't want to be a global vision. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's get out of Syria. Let, let's leave Syria to whoever. Or who cares what happens there? We just did it yesterday. Jim Mattis resigned, right? Because liberal democracy turned away from its leadership role in the world. That's what actually just happened in the last two days. It's a big deal, right? Liberal democracy doesn't have a code of identity. It doesn't have a narrative of identity. It doesn't have a universe story. It doesn't have a narrative of power. So it doesn't know what to do with its power. It's confused about how to excise its power. It doesn't have a story. The story of liberal democracy, we no longer think is the triumphant story that will conquer the world. It's falling apart. The mortgage crisis in 2008, right? The whole system is fragile. And it, it's lacking, you know, you know, when Putin looks at liberal democracy, you know what he sees is missing? For all of Putin's evil, and Putin has genuine evil, but, but, but that kind of Russian zeitgeist, he, he doesn't see their courage. He doesn't see their honor. He doesn't see, right, this, this sense of kind of passion, right? And he's not all wrong. He's not all wrong, right? In other words, what's the vision that liberal democracy is standing for? Liberal democracy, for all of its problems, 
It's the best system we've ever had. But we have to invest liberal democracy with a higher vision of democracy and with a vision of who we are. Homo amor needs to meet liberal democracy. A new narrative of power right, needs to meet liberal democracy. A new narrative of identity, right? a new narrative of community, a new universe story. Right? Literally, literally, I want it just so we get this. Otherwise, this is all words, right? What we're holding in the Church of Evolutionary Love is the set of narratives which have courage and honor and duty. And duty, I want to get that, and obligation. And the joy of responsibility, right? right? When we said at the beginning, we weren't kidding, right? God turns to Barbara and says, today's your birthday. I can't do it without you. It's not a joke when we say the infinity of power stepped back and said, right, you're my partner. That's the most, can you imagine that? It's not a word. It's like, it's the most serious thing, the most joyous thing we could possibly say to actually realize I am needed by all that is. And I need to be powerful, right? How do we activate this in a real way, Karen? We actually, right, the way we've chosen is to actually come together, the Foundation for Conscious Evolution, the Center for Critical Wisdom, to found together the Church of Evolutionary Love. Let's build the church. That's the first thing we have to do. We, because the church is our vehicle for sharing the codes of the world. And our vision of the church is there has to be millions, not, not hundreds of thousands. And let's be power hungry. This is for realsies. Right? We have to have millions of people around the world with hundreds, thousands of evolutionary churches. This church has to, we got to build this model. Right? So if I sit by and I'm going to press a little hard for a second, it's Christmas with your permission, right? But I want, to, I want to get this. If I sit by and say, okay, I'm going to come to church every week, but I'm not going to give $20 a month. I'm too busy. That's nonsense, right? No one makes a salary in the church, right? The first step of power is I exercise my power, right? And I actually step and I say, this is my church. This is my church of evolutionary love, and we're going to build this, right? And I'm going to actually, I'm going to lay, I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to put it down. Right? I'm going to step up. I'm going to make this happen. Right? This is for real. The Church of Evolutionary Love is the vehicle to transmit right, the new power that's more desperately needed than anything else in the world. You know, my colleague Yuval Harari you know, wrote a number of books, which I've talked about a lot in the last two years, about you know, kind of the, the desperation, the dystopia. And I've been talking about this. Barbara's been talking about this separately before we even knew each other for, for decades. Right? The new story, but not the new story in the kind of abstract you know, Brian Swim universe story, which is basically science is poetic. That's, I love Brian. That's not enough. No, homo amor, right? Evolutionary love drives reality. I'm a unique configuration of evolutionary love. We come together as unique self-symphony. We awaken in the self-organizing universe. We are the carriers of the codes of culture. It's not someone else. It's not someone else is not going to do it. This is ours to do. This is ours to do, right? In the next year, in the next two years, the next month, and the next week, Let's step in. I invite everyone. Right? First off, contribute. Show up. Right? Write us and say, love to volunteer. Right? Right? Step in. Right? Pick up unique self. Read it carefully. Absorb it. Pick up conscious evolution. Read it carefully. Absorb it. In other words, we're the carriers of the codes of the new culture. Right? It's for real. Right? So the way we respond, right? I sat talking to Daniel and Barbara, you know, and Daniel's living with Barbara. Right? And, and, and Daniel's got this, this beautiful sense of what went wrong, but he can't quite vision right, what it means to actually claim power, right? because he so sees the demonization of power, he doesn't see homo more and the possibility of homo more. And homo more is not one person acting in the power structure of Washington. It's literally a self-organizing universe arising. Right? It's an uprising, right? the likes of which has never been seen before. So friends, Let's claim our power. Let's claim our power wildly. We're over time. I'm sure it's 10.04. I apologize. I started a little late, right? Let's go a huge happy birthday, a huge delight. Let's claim our power in ways that are unimaginable. And Barbara, give us the last word, right, on your birthday as we finish the uprising of the unique self Here is that Dan Ellsberg and myself and my sister having breakfast. And Yay. he said to me, Barbara, do you think that anything you could do would be effective? And I could see he did not think so. So then I said, Dan, do you think anything that you do could be effective? And he was writing this book, telling the whole truth here. 
And he said, no, I don't. How could you possibly think you're going to be effective, Barb? So I said, well, you're dealing with the military industrial complex and I'm at the tip of the tipping point. Amen. Now, I just wanted to say in terms of the church of evolutionary law, we are the tip of the tipping point. Now that doesn't, that is so powerful yes. because the, the, the pressure that let's just say realistically, which doesn't look real to Dan, didn't, but this, this, he can't handle this. He can't stop this. Not that way. So we, I, I, I declare that this church stands as a threshold at the tip of the tipping point of humanity and that everybody on earth who feels they are also at the tip of the tipping point, do you know it will tip in this direction? Hallelujah. I'll take my life on that. Thank you, God. Amen, amen, amen. We're loving the power, the power of love. <laughs> I apologize for going over. We're six minutes over, right? But it's the extension that Christmas <laughs> have the most gorgeous day. And Lisa, for those of us who are still here afterwards, how can anyone...